government. And this is the 5.15 p.m. briefing for Saturday, August 1st for Hurricane Isaias. With us today is County Manager George Rechtenwald, Emergency Management Director Jim Judge, Beach Safety Director Ray Manchester, and joining us virtually is Sheriff Mike Chitwood. With that, we'll move right to it. Uh, we'll move to Sheriff Chitwood, who's, who's joining us remotely. We have extra deputies on patrol. We have extra folks inside of dispatch. Uh, we are coordinating closely with our city manager, with our county manager, George Reckenwald, and with our emergency management director, Jim Judge. Uh, from a personal standpoint, I will tell you, if you haven't got out yet uh, to get supplies, if you're, if you're thinking this is gonna be a non-event, uh, that's the worst thing that you can do. Complacency is deadly. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, we'll move to County Manager George Rechtenwald. Uh, Public Works has checked the areas where we see routine flooding uh, to confirm the ditches and culverts and storm drains are clear. They've lowered retention ponds uh, to compensate for additional water. Our beach and coastal teams uh, have been securing all of their assets from trash receptacles to toll booths to lifeguard stands. Uh, road and bridge tree crews uh, have all their equipment in place uh, to quickly clear the roads. And they will also be embedding as we have in the past with Florida Power Light and Duke crews to address power outages so we can get the power on as soon as possible. Our emergency management team continues to participate in meetings and conference calls multiple times a day with city and state officials. Uh, so I'd like also again to remind everyone, uh, now you should be making your plan and you should be taking action. According to the current forecast, uh, we're just about 24 hours away uh, from the onset of uh, tropical storm force winds. So again, I need everyone to uh, pay attention and use some common sense. Uh, depending on the track, the barrier islands could see category one hurricane force winds of 75 miles an hour. So with that in mind, we are gonna issue a voluntary evacuation order effective 8 a.m. tomorrow, uh, Sunday, August 2nd for the barrier island and then people living in mobile homes near the coast. Uh, this really is meant uh, for people who are not comfortable riding out the storm where you are, and, and now, like I say, is the time. So you, you need to be calling Uncle Fred or your friends or whomever live farther inland and, uh, and visit those folks or possibly uh, book a hotel uh, if you're able to. Because we're really encouraging that with uh, the, the current pandemic situation to uh, shelter in place with family or friends. Now, we realize not everyone will have that opportunity, so we will open, and Jim will go over that, some public shelters for those who cannot remain in their current situation and really have no other place to go. With that, I'm gonna invite up Jim Judge to provide an update on the storm and give a little bit more detail on what we're doing with sheltering. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rechtenwald. Again, Jim Judge, Volusia County Emergency Management. So, you know, just a little bit uh, of an update on, uh, on the hurricane. It is uh, moving up the coast right now. Um, it had moved at approximately 12 miles an hour earlier, but now it's down to about eight miles an hour. And literally, uh, it has wobbled a little bit more to the west towards the, uh, the coast, and really only just a little over 10 miles offshore. Uh, there is some fluctuation and has been and will be uh, as we monitor this storm. Uh, it at times falls down below hurricane force winds, and then uh, a short time later it's back up in those 74, 75 mile an hour wind range. So for coastal Volusia County, we are under a hurricane warning. We all are under a storm surge watch. And also we have an interior Volusia County tropical storm watch. So winds, we can expect really uh, low end hurricane force winds right along the coast. And uh, that's ex anticipated to occur literally Sunday night around 11 p.m. Uh, and that'll last till about 7 a.m. in the morning. Once the system passes north of Volusia County, we expect the conditions to uh, improve 
greatly because it's not like one of the typical very large hurricanes that we have to wait quite a while once the uh, center passes to the north for all that southern system to move with it. So to the south of it, it's uh, not that active. Um, also, the uh, onset of sustained tropical storm force winds will occur approximately 3 o'clock tomorrow, always give and take an hour depending on forward speed. But around 3 p.m., tropical storm force sustained winds will come into uh, the Oak Hill area and then, of course, move to the north. Storm surge, still approximately 1 to 3 feet in storm surge, so it's not a, a real big storm surge event. And again, this is more of a wind event. You know, we've had wind events, we've had water events. And with Hurricane Matthew, it was both a wind and a water event. So this is particularly a wind event for us. There is an area around Ponce Inlet, maybe a little bit to the south of the inlet, a little bit to the north, that could experience a three-foot storm surge. Rainfall, still approximately two to four inches along the coast and one to two inches inland. So with, uh, with that, obviously we've got some pretty gusty um, sustained winds and also some large gusts that will come in to 75, 80 miles an hour. Um, as they move through. So it's a good opportunity right now. Take down the wind chimes, bring down the plants, uh, anything that could be a, uh, a, an object that could fly around. You want to secure those items. Uh, look after your neighbors. You know, if you have elderly neighbors that may need a little bit of assistance, a good opportunity to provide some assistance to them. But again, if you secure all those items, you're going to be in better shape so you don't end up with something going through a window. Because again, we always say you want to, you know, hide from the wind. So if you have a good secure home, as Mr. Rectenwall stated, that's a good place to stay. If you have the opportunity to uh, put up some plywood, that's even better. Um, and certainly, you know, it's a long way to the end of hurricane season. So you may want to even consider purchasing some of those manufactured uh, storm shutters for your home. And that even makes you even that much more secure. And of course, right now, it's so important to continue to monitoring this system because it has wobbled, it will wobble again, and then again, the, uh, the track and intensity can certainly change as we get into the overnight hours and into tomorrow morning. We will have an additional National Weather Service briefing this evening at 545, and then they continue to uh, update us. Um, as Mr. Rectenwald mentioned, you know, it's a good time to go visit your uncle in uh, Mount Dora. Um, certainly, hotel rooms are available on the uh, west side of the county. Uh, staying with family and friends. However, if you're in an RV, a recreational vehicle, an older mobile home, or you're in a, uh, an area along the coast that you feel may not be the best to be, uh, we do have public shelters that will open at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Two of those shelters are going to be special needs shelters. One is Galaxy Middle, and the other one is Freedom Elementary, both in DeLand. They're on the west side. That's where we want them because of the wind potential on the east side. But again, if you go to a special needs shelter, um, those are wonderful because if you have an oxygen concentrator and you're concerned about a, an electrical appliance and you're able to plug that oxygen, uh, that oxygen concentrator in, and uh, all those, uh, both of those schools are generator backup. So that's important to know. So if you're coming to a shelter again tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, uh, Freedom Elementary, Galaxy Middle, and Deltona, but also the Volusia County Fairgrounds is our pet-friendly shelter. So that's primarily pet-friendly. And also for individuals who need to shelter who do not have a valid ID, because we do check IDs as individuals come into a public shelter, we have arrangements for them uh, also at the fairgrounds. Um, and of course, taking all the COVID-19 precautions, mandatory face coverings, um, hand washing, uh, everyone will be issued um, the um, hand sanitizer. Um, also, social distancing. Traditionally, individuals get 20 square feet. Uh, with uh, COVID-19, we expand that to 60 square feet. Um, so where we might be able to put a lot of special needs folks in one shelter, it's best to spread out, do that social distancing. So two locations there. Then also um, at the um, DeLand High School, that will be our general population shelter. So if you uh, just need a place to go, you don't have a pet, uh, DeLand High School will be the way to go. That All of those shelters were open 8 a.m. Please don't get there any earlier. Uh, the staff will be there. We have moved a lot of supplies and equipment today to be ready to open the doors right at 8 o'clock. And we do have uh, a number of hours before that inclement weather uh, will be upon us uh, toward midday. So that's important to remember. You know, and, and also what to bring to a shelter. You know, when, when you get that 60 square feet at a general population center, you know, what you bring is what you're going to have. So think about a, uh, uh, 
sort of a, an aluminum lawn chair like you take to the beach that can fold out, a good book to read. Um, you know, these shelters can be somewhat noisy. Um, a good book, again, um, maybe even some earbuds with some music to listen to. So something to keep yourself uh, occupied. You want to have something to eat before you go to that shelter in the morning. Don't get to the shelter hungry. Food will be provided uh, at all the shelters, as always. But again, um, it's good to bring snacks and a little extra food uh, for yourself as well. And of course, if you go to volusia.org forward slash emergency, there are, uh, there's a great deal of information uh, that you can pull up about what to, uh, what to bring you with the shelter. Of course, if you have COVID-19 or you're symptomatic, we would prefer you not come to a public shelter and seek uh, isolation in a different location. Let me introduce uh, Mr. Ray Manchester, Director of Beach Services. Uh, good afternoon, Ray Manchester, Beach Services Director. Uh, today, about 2 o'clock, we suspended beach driving on the beach. Uh, we closed those eastbound gates, and that allows our staff and the coastal staff time to get out there and secure those assets that Mr. Rectumwald was talking about, those toll booths, uh, the garbage cans, our lifeguard towers, signs, barricades, and everything that can and will either blow away or float away. So we're currently working on that, and we anticipate uh, well, we're not going to have any driving tomorrow, obviously, through the when the surf picks up and everything. We're flying a red flag as we speak. We've had several rescues today. Uh, we anticipate continuing to fly the red flag. We will not fly a red flag unless it's a hard closure. So uh, we do expect people to be at the beach, but it won't be open to driving. If people are coming to the beach, uh, we ask them to swim in front of a lifeguard tower, obviously, but I am going to highly discourage people from getting in the water. If you do, maybe stay about knee deep water. Uh, it's gonna be pretty rough out there and there's gonna be all kinds of rip currents. Uh, we will have lifeguard staff out there tomorrow, but not in the numbers that you would normally expect uh, at this time of year. Um, we will have our full-time staff out there, obviously, with the trucks and everything, and they will be patrolling and uh, doing what they can to keep an eye on everything as much as possible. Five. The Citizens Information Center will be open today through 6 p.m., then again tomorrow, Sunday, and then also Monday throughout the day to answer any questions during the storm. Again, that number is 866 345 0345. Another good resource for storm information is available at volusia.org forward slash isaias, and that is I S A I A S. With that, we'll close this evening's conference. Take care, stay safe, and help your neighbors. Mm -hmm.